You know, two directors are shining a light on survivors of abuse. And So I Stayed is an award-winning documentary about three survivors who strikingly have similar stories and were separated by 30 years. They all point to how no one believed their stories about their abuse and each ended up behind bars together to fight back. Here's a clip. We all had police reports, hospital records, witness statements, pictures of violations. For God's sake, Nikki's abuser raped her and, and uploaded it to a porn site. What more evidence do you need? Why didn't my hospital records matter? Why didn't Nikki's hospital records matter? Why didn't Tanisha's hospital records matter? Why didn't my police reports matter? Why didn't Nikki's police reports matter? Why didn't Tanisha's police reports matter? Why didn't my scars, bruises, and marks on me matter? Why didn't Nikki's matter? Why didn't Tanisha's matter? Why does it not matter? What happens to us? Wow. Powerful. What well, matters to us because we're talking about it. Joining me now as we honor Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the film's directors, Natalie Batillo and Daniel, Daniel Nelson, as well as formerly incarcerated survivor and advocate Kim Brown. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks Thank for you for having me. Having. Natalie, what inspired you to make this film? Well, it, it started out of um, my own experiences of being a survivor of domestic violence. And also um, in 2010, my uh, sister was killed by her abuser. And um, when I went to grad school at Columbia, I knew that I wanted to cover domestic violence. And that was back in 2015. And um, there was a advisor who sort of, I told my personal stories to and said, why don't you cover the story about survivors who are criminalized for fighting back? And in my mind, it just like did not make sense that we were putting survivors behind bars for their acts of survival, whether it was self-defense or being coerced to commit a crime by their abuser. Uh, you know, survivors often feel like it's a life or death situation, and it really is. So since then, I uh, decided that I would continue to um, report that and that's how I um, I learned about Kim and her incredible work with New York's Domestic Violence Survivors Justice Act. I had also um, at that time sent my um, story uh, to Dan, who's co-director, and uh, I'll let him sort of speak to how he came on and then obviously let Kim speak on to speak about her experience <laughs> as well. You got it. I'll guide the conversation. Kim, you know, you were incarcerated for 17 years for killing your abusive husband. Why? What was it? What was it you lacked? What was it that you weren't getting? Who wasn't hearing you that 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 caused you or pushed you to the point where you felt like that was your only option? Well, thank you for having me. and Thank you for having us this morning. Um, I think it's the lack of um, a lack of a an, a trauma informed approach when you bring your abuser to the courtroom. I had five um, arrest warrants for Darnell. I had hospital records, police reports, battered women's shelter reports. I had him arrested five times, but none of that seemed to matter at court. And every time we went to court, you know, I was the upset, hysterical woman that no one was really paying attention to. And um, he would stand there and say how I he doesn't want anything to do with me. And then as soon as we would get outside, he would be right there grabbing me by, by the little fat roll on my side, pinching me hard, saying, come on, let's go. So it was um, a lack of support from the system. You, you know, I, I went to the court. I, I filed police reports. I did everything I thought I was supposed to do to be safe and nothing, no one kept me safe. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking uh, just hearing that. And unfortunately we hear these types of stories far too often. And Daniel, um, my guess is you were pretty surprised uh, to hear 
uh, many things about these survivors and within Kim's story and, and others. Do you think this doc can make a difference? Do you think this is finally kind of the angle, the feel, the emotion, the characters that can drive home why something has to be done to protect women like Kim? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think when I first started this and, and Natalie had showed me this uh, the story, which was originally Kim's story and a version of her master's thesis, I was really blown away by how prevalent this issue was uh, being criminalized for, for defending yourself against your abuser. Um, and Natalie's an incredible writer and journalist, so the story was incredible. And Kim is one of those people who just sort of jumps off the page when you read about her. And yeah, I feel like documentary film is, is a medium that is very impactful for talking about issues like this. And I just hope that people walk away from this film understanding that um, I, I think folks have a tendency to just trust that the legal system is doing the right thing. Um, and in many cases, it does not, particularly with uh, domestic violence survivors. And so I hope that people can watch that this film and see that. Agreed. And Natalie, you know, the New York Times covered uh, how your film actually played a role in Tanisha Davis's case. She's featured in the film, which resulted in freedom after a conviction. What was that like for you? And does it show you just the power of what your filmmaking can do? It really does. It really does uh, show us the power of, you know, storytelling and, and survivors using their voice. Um, we, we were honored to be a part of that process. We worked with Tanisha and her lawyers to put together a video statement with her application to be resentenced under this new law that, you know, Kim had fought for for 10 years. So it was a day that I will never forget. And, um, you know, there's still women behind bars like Tanisha. There's Nikki Adamando who faced a 19 to life sentence. So, you know, the work is not done, um, although that was, you know, very uplifting for us. We, we still hope to, to free more survivors, um, whether it's through educating, uh, you know, the legal system, uh, trainings, uh, you know, uh, and just empathy. Like really, truly, it's like these are people's lives. The, they, these survivors had, have hopes and dreams. They, you know, are not a true crime story. They should not be reduced to that. And uh, there's real nuance that should be explored in um, learning about domestic violence. And, and I hope that our film can contribute to, to that conversation. Well, it already has, uh, and you're helping women get their power back. Kim, Natalie, Daniel, thank you so much. And Natalie, uh, your strength is, is, is so amazing. Appreciate all three of you for what you're doing. Thank you for Thanks having, for having us. us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.